Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'll be taking you guys through the paintwork on this Volkswagen Tiguan. I'm going to be using the Chromax Pro water base system. I'll take you through every single stage I need to get this car painted. So as you can see, the prep work has been done. We've got a new door to paint on this car and we're also painting down the entire side. The left hand front guard is just a blend. There's a repair on the lower rear door and then there's another blend on the rear quarter panel. So what I did was did all of my edge masking. I then threw a piece of plastic over the car and now I'm doing my wet on wet primer. So I haven't actually started, uh, finished the masking on the car, sorry. So I did start it, got all the edges done and then it takes about 15 minutes for this wet on wet primer to dry. So I thought that would be a good thing to do to get the wet on wet primer on first. While that's drying, I'll cut around the edges, finish the masking off and then it's going to be right to continue on. There's a couple of advantages to doing it this way. You are removing your downtime. Say if I was to get the entire car masked up, then I would be waiting for this to dry because we do have that 15 minute window. And also, I'm actually eliminating the possibility of any overspray on those blend areas. So I am obviously in a uh, downdraft booth and yeah, overspray isn't the biggest issue, but um, yeah, there is still a slim possibility if, uh, I could have uh, got a little bit of overspray over there. Now you may notice that I didn't even sand the inside of that panel. This is something that it's taken me a while to get my head around it, but I've been told now by so many paint reps that their wet on wet is guaranteed to stick to unsanded E-coat. So for those of you who do not know, E-coat is that black primer that you see on just about any brand new panel. Sometimes it's gray or something like that. But yes, they do actually guarantee that. So you can not even sand the exterior of a panel, put the wet on wet down, they will guarantee adhesion. So anyway, I thought I'd include a little bit of the masking stage, just cutting around all the edges with a nice sharp razor blade, making sure that there is no tape sitting on the exterior panel that I need to paint. Now, some people do go what I tend to think a little bit overboard with these edges. I believe all you need to do is back mask. As you can see, I've then flipped that back over on itself, left a little gap there, and that's usually enough. Now, some people get all fancy with the um, false edging, which I do do in the rear door jam, but as far as most openings go, a back mask is sufficient, and it does save a bit of time and also materials as well. So it's always something I'm conscious of. Um, but working in this shop, here it's actually great because there is uh they're not tight asses basically put it that way um you've got anything and everything you could ever need um a few things i would like to touch on is prep work when using the chromax pro water base which is a very similar product if not exactly the same product as the standox and space hacker so stando blue and i believe space hacker have also got a water base system which is just about identical to the chromax uh, pro um now i used to always a lot of you guys probably know my prep method I used to always finish off exterior panels by hand with 800 grit i found that the first job i actually painted in water base I've got a few very slight sanding scratches. Now the Chromax Pro um, actually will be left with a thinner film build than if you are to paint with most solvent paints. So it's literally a heavy coat followed by a drop coat, which is just like a you hold the gun back and you'll see that later on in the video when I start putting my base coat down. Um, but yeah, you're left with a much thinner film build. It goes on, it uh, dries down very silky. Um, that's one thing I'm very impressed with. But yeah, just take that little bit extra time with your prep work, and maybe change the uh, 800 grit for 1000 grit. Obviously, choose your battles. You know, if you're doing a black or a solid color, um, it's going to be a little bit more forgiving. You might be able to use the 800 grit. I've also actually found that the 800 grit sanding sponges that we are using now. Um, are a little bit coarse. I'm using the 3M ones, um, but yeah, we still I've still been using the 800 grit on the orbital to uh, sand those blends down, so that's still fine. I'll probably actually go a little bit more into detail in that prep work in another video. I might actually just make a specific video on my prep methods for the water base. Anyway, that will be in another one. Obviously, you can see I've got all my masking done. I'm now wiping the entire thing down with wax and grease remover and one of those uh, Polytex cloths. So they are supposedly lint 
free. Uh, these probably aren't one of my favorite on the market, but I'm still able to get some good results with it. I, I find that if there's any bits that you back mask, like sort of around door handles and stuff like that, there will be a little bit of lint stand uh, getting on there. But yeah, a good blow off and attack rag, and as long as you're aware of it, it's all good. Um, now, I'm actually using Prepsol, yes, Prepsol. Now, there actually are some different water-based cleaners on the market. The guys here that are painting, there's another two painters, and they say, mate, all you need is Prepsol, a wax and grease remover. Um, but you can use those specific water-based cleaners. Now, on the door, if you're gonna be putting the wet on wet, as you saw, I would not be recommending using those water-based cleaners because it's just solvent-based two-pack uh, wet on wet prime that's going over there. Hope I didn't confuse you there. I know what I'm talking about, but um, yeah, I think more some of the more experienced guys will have followed that. Now, what I'm using here is Base Coat Blender. It is ready for you straight out of the can, and I will actually make a video in the paint room going through some of those kind of products in the future. Um, now, I am still learning this myself, um, I've only been working at this place for one week and I just came home from work tonight I thought you know what? I haven't done any edited and narrated videos for a while I may as well just smash one out I know you guys have been waiting for quite some time so after that base coat blenders down we're right to start putting our color on and I've done the blend first which is what I was told when the guys came out and did some training with me it was the best part of three and a half or four days I was actually uh, working one-on-one -on -one with two separate reps on two separate occasions it was. So one from the distributor of Chromax or, and then one from the just, uh, the actual uh, Axelta themselves who, um, yeah, they provide some good training. And uh, the main thing that one of the guys was telling me, the guy from uh, Axelta, he just said, really concentrate on your overlap. So keep a nice tight overlap. Um, that's when applying your water-based base coat. Uh, it is taking me a little bit to get used to, um, and if I'm doing anything wrong here, I'm happy for you guys to leave it in the comments and tell me, mate, you're doing it totally wrong. But at the end of the day, the results are what we're looking for, and I'm getting them. So, um, yeah, doing that blend first, and then, I'll, and then as you'll notice, I'll be coming back over the panel and then doing a heavy coat, followed by that drop coat, which is what we call the coat where you hold the gun back a little bit, and then just put sort of, I would usually call it an effect coat, but um, yeah, call it what you will. And look, it may look mottly straight off the gun, but a lot of the time it will dry down and yeah, it'll dry down fine. I did get a touch of model just on that quarter panel pillar, something that probably only the trained eye would notice. So this is that drop coat. And they do say that all you really need is one coat on all your edges. Um, because you do get coverage over your edges and this second coat here really is just uh, yeah, to get that metallic standing up nicely and to help control that model or yeah, stop the model I guess. Um, now looking at what I'm doing here, I think I'm, I actually had that blend right now um, but I've gone back over it again and it was just here, uh, it ended up mottling up so I probably should have just left well enough alone. Uh, this is probably the solvent man coming out in me and just taking a little bit of getting used to. Um, but yeah, a couple of other things that they've taught me is paint the faces of your panels first. So um, yeah, another thing that's taken me a little bit of getting used to, you can see here, just out of habit, I've gone and sprayed those edges first. Um, but they just said, look, spray your faces first and then go around and do your edges. And then you can, once your edges are done, put that drop coat on, job done. Application, as far as the base coat goes, I'm sure within, oh, I'm already getting the hang of it, within a week, I will probably not want to go back to solvent at all. Um, yes, you've got, you know, it, drying times do take a little bit longer, but once I've got the base coat on, I'll just slap the booth up to say 40 degrees. Supposedly you don't want to go too high with it or else you can actually start causing issues. You've got the option of getting these air blowers. We've just got handheld ones here. You can blow some air over it if you really are in a hurry. But otherwise, I'll just go and get my next job set up. I'll go outside, mix my clear up, clean a couple of the guns out, and um, get my next job set up. So there's really no downtime. So I did cut a little bit of footage out from painting the inside of that door so I could get straight back onto the drop coat here now. Looking back on this footage, I probably could have gone a little bit tighter with the overlap when I'm doing this drop coat. 
but um, it did look good when it was all finished off. And that's the main thing, as I say before. Results are what we're looking for. And like anything, you're only going to get better with time. Um, I've been asking loads of questions. It felt like I actually didn't get much work done in the first week, but I still learnt a lot. Yeah, one and a half coats. I did keep that base coat blended just off that edge a touch. They did tell me that you can go right up to the edge with it. But you could see maybe on the first coat it looked a bit much modelly, a bit patchy. And it still does, but that should dry down quite nice. I'm gonna go out and heat the boost up a little bit, turn the temp up. Not too much, they say you shouldn't go too high with it, but you can see here, we've probably got better airflow through here. And that's starting to dry down quite quickly. Probably leave that for maybe 15 minutes and it should be right to clear. Go and sort my next job out, get it all set up out there in the bay. And uh, yeah, maybe go mix and clear up now, put it in the gun, bring it in, get a bit of warmth into it. And yeah, smash a couple of coats of clear on it. So this here is when it's just about ready to clear coat. You can see just in some of those edges, uh, it takes a touch longer to dry. So you can just get one of those air blowers. Uh, I didn't use it on this job here, but um, yeah, you can just force a bit of air on there. You do have to be careful that you don't go and skin it over and then be left with sort of like a puddle underneath it where the top is dry, but underneath it's sort of still wet because that will lead to big issues. Thought I'd give you guys a quick look at the clear coat I'm using. So you can see there, it's CC6400 XK205 is the low emissions activator, and then AZ9100. I'm not even sure exactly what that is. They call it a performance agent. It's not thinners. I'm sure that it's not thinners. Um, I think it's probably something to do with the emissions and stuff like that, but I really don't know. But this clear is absolutely amazing. It's a VOC clear, so they are better for the environment. You can get a bigger film build with less paint. The application method I'm using is called grip and rip or tack and whack, but call it what you will. This first coat is basically just a really quick one. So it's uh, basically just closed. So you're not putting a real heavy coat on or anything like that. And then straight away, I'll go back to the first panel I started on, put a wet one over it, and that's job done. You can do that with these kind of clears. If I was to go and do that with an MS clear, I would imagine I'd have big solvent boil issues and all that kind of stuff. But um, as you saw that uh, performance agent that we put in, so because it's not thinners, you're not reducing it. You don't have all those solvents trying to uh, escape out of the clear coat as well. Um, and I've also noticed that the uh, water-based base coat is probably a lot cleaner and it goes on a lot silk, it dries down a lot silkier. Um, there is absolutely no need to tack rag it at all. And if you did, you'd probably actually cause more issues with dust because you're just moving it around or you might get something coming off your tack rag. So I didn't tack rag this job at all and I would call it about as close to off the gun as what you'll really get. There's really only one bit that I would even consider denibbing out and that was in the door. Um, but yeah. All in all, very happy with this system. And yeah, I'm enjoying changing up the guns. I've been using my ProLite TE20 with this same clear coat and the 1.3 mil. And then the other painter, I was just talking to him about guns and he said, oh, this is one of my favorite clear guns. Cause I just said, oh, what gun do you clear with? And he said, yep, I'm using the LS400 with the number one air cap on it. So it's a HVLP cap on this. And I'm really impressed with it. Um, I was just speaking to the guys from Spray Guns Direct about getting one myself. And they said, well, over here, they're actually um, more known as a base coat gun, the HVLP guns. Um, he said, yeah, only really good painters can actually get decent finishes with them. Uh, you know, otherwise you'll get, um, yeah, a big orange peel. So basically you paint like what I painted then, go really close. You've got to move it quick and just do those uh, two quick coats with the... Um, VOC or HS clear, you know, to me that's a recipe for success. Um, I can happily change to just about any gun and get good results. Uh, but yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend a HVLP gun for the MS clears. Like you can use it, but it's really, yeah, probably gonna put a little bit too much on. Then you will start getting some solvent boiling issues and yeah, maybe a bit of orange peel and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I thought I'd make a quick mention to the gun that I was using for the base coats because I didn't say that before. So the gun was the GPI and that's got a 1.4mm setup on it. 
I tried using the Anesto Water Bellaria uh, with the 1.3 mil on it for base coat uh, just today actually, and it really just struggled. It couldn't get enough paint out. Um, so I've been using that Bellaria for the wet on wets at the moment. That's my wet on wet gun lately. And I was using the ANI F150 1.4 mil for that base coat blender, which is quite a thick product. It's very thick. All those uh, water-based base coats in the Chromax range, they are very thick. You can add a little bit of uh, water to it, basically. I think it's just demineralized water or something like that. But the guys, the paint reps, they just said, look, you don't need to. There's no need for it. Um, one of the guys said, all it's going to do is just slow it down a little bit. So I just thought, you know what? Um, I'm going to do what they say. So the other two painters actually do prefer to put a little bit in. But I just thought, well, I'll do what the paint reps say and sort of take it from there. If I'm finding that I'm struggling, then maybe I will put a little bit uh, of water in there to thin the base coats down. But that Vilbis GPI and the ANI with their 1.4 mils on them are absolutely ripping up these base coats and totally killing it. Um, so I'm extremely impressed with that GPI for water-based base coat. And I do highly recommend anyone who's looking for a new water-based base coat gun to give the uh, yeah Devilbus GPI with 1.4 a crack. Look, they're a well-priced gun. You can get them from around $300, $350. Um, that was at exchange rates about six, seven months ago. You may pay an extra couple of bucks for your shipping. But yeah, I put a few people onto that gun and yeah, they've been pretty impressed with it. If you mention that uh, I sent you spray guns direct, we'll actually throw in a couple of extras. So there too. we go, five minutes or four and a half minutes got me clear coat down on the whole side of that uh, VW TIG one. The LS400 Pininfarina Supernova. It's got the LS400 01 uh, air cap on it, so that's the HVLP. Gun settings I used there was. I wound the fan right open and then come in one and three quarter full turns. So one and three quarter turns in, four turns out with the fluid, or actually, sorry, it was four and a half turns out it came. I found four, which is not quite enough, I was just a touch too much. I fit, found the sweet spot and I did the old tack and whack, grip and rip, as you want to call it, call it what you will. But um, yeah, quite a rapid clear coat application and that's really clean. If that was my job, or if that was my car, I personally wouldn't cut and polish that. I've found using this Chromax water base, I get much nicer finishes off the gun, and even also after a bake, sometimes with those cheaper clears and the solvent base, um, you can bake it and it'll just die in the ass. So you can have a nice and sort of wet finish like that, and then you hit bake and it, yeah, it just looks really orange peeling. Yeah, it really sort of sucks sucks back in, but the colors blended out quite nice. I'm happy with that. Definitely a win. It's great to be working in a good workshop again. Yes, the booth may look a bit dirty, but you can still achieve some really good results. We've got good suction in here. We've got the heat in there too. So I'm gonna go clean the gun out, give that five minutes to tack off, and then hit the bake button. Give it probably a 40 minute bake at 60 degrees. So this is a car, as it sits, I didn't want to wait around till tomorrow until they got the door on and gave it a clean up. I just wanted to get this video edited up for you guys tonight. I could probably include loads more info and I will do in the future. Make sure you stay tuned. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.